Let's look at the story of Musa up to this point. First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised up Musa in the palace of Fir'aun so that Musa can be an insider. He sees how the government functions from the inside. Musa has first-hand knowledge of the corruption of Fir'aun because he seen it with his own eyes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Musa travel out of Egypt in the land so that he can learn. He was now a shepherd and he had a flock and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trained him. So Musa alayhi salam received this training for 10 whole years. He got married, mashallah, he was very happy. He took his wife and now he wanted to go. Something within him told him I need to go back home to see my folks and so on. And this was the opening of a whole new chapter in the life of Musa alayhi salam. Allah was preparing him for the most difficult job of all. The most difficult job of all is the job of the Anbiya. The particular work of Sayyidina Musa was going to be one of the most challenging work that any Nabi has faced. Because who is Musa going to be dealing with? Allah is sending him to the man who claimed to be God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending Sayyidina Musa to face the oldest monarchy living on the face of the earth. And that is the family of Fir'aun. This family who believed that divine blood is running through their veins. They believe that they are the seeds of God, that they are the children of God. This family that rule over an empire of the rich Nile River, they have been ruling for centuries and centuries and nobody dares to stand against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna send one man against this strong powerful family headed by Fir'aun. Until now, up to this point, Musa is not a prophet yet. He is not a messenger. But until now, Musa has no idea what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hiding for him in the future. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. Brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Musa has been away from his mother, his family, his country for 10 years. He feels homesick. He misses his family. He wants to go back and visit his mother. He wants to go and visit his brother. He wants to go and visit his family. He wants to go back to his homeland, the, way, the place of his birth. And after that, Musa alayhi salam will prepare himself to travel and he will leave Madian towards Egypt. Musa alayhi salam on the way he got lost. He got lost. He didn't know where the way, where the exact way to Egypt. There is no light. It was completely dark and it was very cold. And Musa is with his wife alone in this very difficult environment. And Musa alayhi salam needs someone to tell him. So he's looking for anyone. Musa saw what appeared to be fire far away. When he'd seen the light on one side of the Mount Tur, he paused immediately and told his family, do you see this light I have seen? Let me go to it. You wait here. I will come back to you at least with a little piece of it on this cold night. We might have a little bit of warmth and we will come maybe with a log, something that is lit up or the minimum. If they don't want to share that fire with us, I will at least ask them where is the road and where is the path. He walks the and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about one of the most amazing conversations that happened in the history of the universe. When he got close to that particular light, he noticed something else. He saw a fire in the mirror of a tree as being narrated. That's not burning the tree. It was an amazing shock for him. As he got closer and closer, it was a bright light. It was not the light of a fire. It was a brighter light than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how he was addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly to Musa alayhi salam automatically he received a, a higher status. He was then known as Kalimullah, the one whom Allah has spoken to directly. Allah azza wa jalla says when Musa alayhi salam reached in the valley, the blessed valley next to the tree, Allah had called him and told him, Oh Musa, it is me, Allah, the Lord of this universe. Musa alayhi salam did not expect anyone to call him that. So obviously Musa alayhi salam was shocked, looking around, who's that that's speaking to me? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa, Oh Musa, I am your Rabb. So remove your shoes. You are indeed 
in this particular valley of Tua, which is very sacred. Immediately he removed his shoes, Musa alayhi salatu was salam. So he went into that sacred valley in Natu, and then he saw this tree, green tree. There was fire burning in it, but the tree is becoming more green and green. And that fire was not fire, it was light. And then he watched and he saw that light was extending up to the heavens. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, O oh Moses, O oh Musa, I have chosen you, O oh Musa. So listen to what I am revealing to you. Listen to what I am telling you. Indeed, I am Allah. There is none worthy of worship besides me alone. So worship me alone and establish your prayer, establish your salah. Indeed, the hour is a reality that is coming. And I have hidden it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the knowledge of the hour is not known by anybody, so that I can recompense people in the proper manner for their deeds. Musa went to that fire because he wants guidance, so that someone will tell him the direction to Egypt. But he came back for guidance for mankind. Tawheed number one. The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what was the next order after Tawheed? Aqimi salat al Establish prayer for my remembrance. Salah was prescribed on Musa in a direct conversation between him and Allah. And how was Salah prescribed on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It was prescribed on him in the trip of Al-Miraj without anyone in between. That is the importance of the Salah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, what he has told every prophet and that is the people need to believe in the akhirah in the afterlife musa is holding his stick so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him about his stick what is that in your hands o musa what is in your right hand allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew better than him what was in the right hand but this is the discussion allah out of the love he had for musa alayhi salam is asking him a question what is that in your right hand now Musa alayhi salam, he was now very, very calm, collected, and he was very, very happy that he's speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam says, Oh my Rabb, this is my stick. It's a stick that I hold. Allah didn't ask him, what do you use it for? Allah just said, what is it in your right hand? It was enough for him to say it's a stick. But he decided, let me now talk a little bit more. When am I going to get this chance again? Subhanallah. So he says, I lean on it, Ya Allah. I use it as support. And I use it in order to help me with my flock so that I can pull down some branches and some, you know, a little bit of the fodder to feed these, this flock and so on. And I guide the flock with the same stick. And I also use it for many other things, Ya Allah. Musa alayhi salam, look at how he's speaking. With us, when we say Allahu Akbar in salah, we are communicating with Allah. A lot of us are guilty of wanting that salah to end immediately. Look at Musa alayhi salam. He was prolonging the communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May we be from those whom when we say Allahu Akbar, we forget about the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter, Allah says, we instructed him, throw it, O Musa, throw it down. Release the stick, throw it. So Musa threw away his stick. And what happened? When Musa threw that stick, that stick turned to become a great massive snake that no human being had ever seen in their life. When Musa saw that, he ran. It was a reaction of a human being. He ran away and he did not look back because this is his stick which he knew for a very long time. And now suddenly it's a huge snake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is training Musa. This natural human fear has to get out of his heart. So Allah Azza wa Jal told him, Ya Musa, oh Musa, come back. And do not have any fear because you are going to be safe and secure. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, O oh Musa, take it, go back to it and lift it up again. We will make it exactly what it was before. So Musa alayhi salam goes down and he picks up this live snake. And as he's picking it up, it becomes a stick once again. Subhanallah. Now his iman is strengthened even more. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, put your right hand under your arm. So Musa alayhi salam threw him. His garment, he put his hand under his arm and Allah told him, take it out. It took him out. It was glowing like a light. His hand was glowing like a light. Subhanallah, bright light, very, very bright light. Allah told him to put his hand back. 
he put his hand back it returns to its normal color now hold your breath for the next thing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is handing down sayyidina musa the responsibility of messenger the prophethood allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that ya musa there is something i want you to do i am sending you to firaun for indeed he is a tyrant he is an oppressor he has transgressed beyond limits allah azza wa jalla said those two verses those two miracles those two signs there are two things that you could use against firaun and his people that are from the fasiqin that are from the wrong doers this is a very very heavy order this is what you call mission impossible now when you are given an impossible mission When you are given a very difficult task, you should ask for resources. What does he ask Allah? He asks Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, "Rabbi shrah li sadri." Oh my Lord, give me that confidence, open my chest, wa yassir li amri. Make this an easy task for me. Wa hlul 'uqdatan bil lisani. Untie the knot of my tongue, yafqahu qawli, so that the people will understand. Musa had a problem with speech either it was difficulty in pronouncing letters or it was difficulty in expressing himself or difficulty in he was stuttering Allahu alam so he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and release one of the notes from my tongue Now Musa alayhi salam he knows how he was brought up he knows he murdered someone he knows he spent some time he knows he's going back to Egypt but he's worried as well that they might arrest him once again because of the murder so immediately he tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh Allah, I killed a man from them. So I fear that they might want to kill me as a result. Then he says, he says, Oh Allah, my brother Harun is much more eloquent than I am. So send him as a prophet with me in order for him to confirm my message. And I fear, Ya Allah, I have a fear that they might belie me. So if you send Harun, he will be more eloquent and he will be able to convey the message that you have given me to convey in another way where they will be able to understand it even further so look at allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah gives him his wish allah says o oh musa alayhi salam firstly we have granted you your wish regarding your brother we will place on your shoulder the strength of your brother as you have requested and we will grant you some form of goodness from us what is this goodness allah says we will create a certain authority for you so they won't be able to harm you with our clear signs inshallah you will be from amongst the victorious no brother has done his brother a favor like musa has done harun because the biggest favor is that musa asked allah to make harun a prophet what bigger favor could you do for your brother and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an advice allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says go both of you to pharaoh verily he has transgressed And what is the advice Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said speak to him with soft and kind words very very politely so that he can actually think he can remember he can be reminded and he can be fearful So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Musa the manners of dawa it has to be done in a soft manner it has to be done in a mild way that is how the dawa should be done Today when we go out to talk to people who have engaged in sin Sometimes the type of language we use is so bad we need to think for a moment is there anyone on the globe today that we can say is worse than Firaun the answer is no and is there anyone from amongst us who can claim to be better than the prophet Moses may peace be upon him the answer is no so if we are not as grand as Moses may peace be upon him and if those we are addressing cannot be as bad as Firaun then we should be speaking in an even more polite manner to everybody around us what was the message go to him and tell him release banu israel you have enslaved the children of jacob banu israel we want you to release these people and stop oppressing them now musa alayhi salam and harun will go to firaun when they arrived to the gate and the palace of firaun the gatekeeper refused entry for them Who were you to come and see the Pharaoh? Who were you? So Musa alayhi salam said, go to the Pharaoh and say, we are messengers. So this gatekeeper went to Pharaoh and told him, there are messengers out there asking and waiting to enter the palace to come and speak to you. So they thought these are, those two are messengers on the behalf of some king or some emperor. 
but they were the messengers on the behalf of the greatest one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they'll walk in and they stand before Fir'aun. And Fir'aun, he's the one that raised Musa alayhi salam. He knew that was Musa standing before him. And then the conversation and dialogue starts between him and Fir'aun, in which Musa alayhi salam will start and say that I am the messenger of Allah coming to guide you to worship no one but Allah, to take it away from the worship of the creation, to worship the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the East and the West. Fir'aun, la'natullah alayhi, with his pride, he says, there is no Lord except me. Fir'aun immediately started reminding Musa with his previous crime, and he also started reminding Musa with his favors on him. I am the one who raised you up, I am the one who fed you, I am the one who took care of you. And this is what you end up doing to me. And the other thing he said, we took care of you. And then you ended up killing one of our people. The response of Musa was amazing. He said, is this a favor when you have enslaved the children of Israel? What was the reason Musa was raised up in the house of Pharaoh? It is because of the oppression of Pharaoh to Bani Israel. If there was no oppression, Musa would have been raised by his own parents. He did not need Fir'aun. So Musa is telling him, What favor are you talking about? That's not a favor. That is because of your oppression against Bani Israel. So don't tell me that that's a favor. And then he talked about the crime. He said, I did it in a time of ignorance. And Fir'aun says, You're telling me about Rabbul Alameen. What is Rabbul Alameen? He doesn't even say who is Rabbul Alameen. He says, what is Rabbul Alameen? Look at the insult. If someone says, this brother Abdul Aziz is coming to see you. You say, what is Abdul Aziz? That is a big insult. You're trying to call him an animal. Astaghfirullah. You say, who is he? Not what is he? So Musa alayhi salam says, whoever created the skies and the earth and whatever lies between it, if indeed you are convinced, Musa alayhi salam says, that is who Rabbul Alameen is. And people around are just watching. They're afraid. They're shocked. How could someone speak to the Pharaoh like this? They've never experienced anyone speaking anywhere near what Musa alayhi salam speaking to the Pharaoh. So, Fir'aun, when he heard this, what did he say? He looks at the people around him. He says, are you listening to what this man is saying? Are you listening? Can you hear? Do you know of a God besides me? He is saying there's someone who created the skies and the earth and everyone. And that is the God who deserves to be worshipped alone. Nobody else. I am the God. So he looks at those around him making these statements. Musa alayhi salam didn't stop there. He says he is also your God, your maker, the one who made you and your forefathers before you, all of them. He is the maker. We worship him alone. So Fir'aun is getting upset. He wants to start accusing the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. So he says, indeed, this messenger who is sent to you is mad. He's mad. Look at him. Musa alayhi salam went to him and told him, we want to send you to send Banu Israel with us. And we want you to release them and stop oppression. And you are not the God and so on. Fir'aun laughed at them. Him and his people. They were laughing. They were laughing at the signs of Allah. They were laughing firstly at the messengers, scoffing at them. Now Fir'aun starts to threaten with his powers. He starts to threaten with his strength. Oh Musa, if he continues saying that there's another Lord beside me, I will lock you up and I will torture you and I'll execute you. Look at the threat. Now Musa alayhi salam was calm. Why was he calm? He knew Allah told him, with our signs, you and those who follow you will definitely be the winners. So he knew there's nothing that anyone can do. So Fir'aun is threatening him with a jail sentence. Musa alayhi salam looks at him and he asks him a question. He says, what if I've brought you something very clear, a sign? He says, okay, let's see the sign you have. When Fir'aun asked for the sign, let's see it. Musa alayhi salam threw his stick. And that stick will turn to a massive snake that they mentioned one part was touching one roof, the other was touching the ground. Everyone around sees that sink, gets scared and pulls away. And then Musa grabs it again and he comes back again as a stick. And then Musa puts his hands under his arms, takes it out and glows like a moon. And then he puts it in again and comes back normal. And people are watching that. And Fir'aun realizes that now people are really sympathizing with Musa. People, are, people now are listening to Musa. People now are really considering to say, He's not the Lord. The Lord is the Lord of Musa alayhi salam. 
So Fir'aun, he stands up, he says, this is magic. Like every other magic that we see and experience. The, the people, the chiefs said that he is a magician. And at the time of Musa alayhi salam was a time of magic being spread. People used to respect magicians. Fir'aun start to play around with the minds of people and this is just magic like every other magic that we have and experience and we have a lot of magicians out there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we showed Fir'aun all of our signs. Nevertheless, he still rejected and refused. Now Fir'aun is challenging Musa. Oh Musa, do you want to drive us out of our land with your magic? He said, do you want to do that with your magic? We have stronger magic than yours. We gonna bring you with magic similar to it and better. And Musa alayhi salam will say, we accept that challenge. Let's assign a day. And Musa alayhi salam, he wanted that challenge to be open where everyone can see and attend. Musa chose the day of Azina. This is the festival of the people of Egypt. On that day, all of the people would gather together and they would have a big celebration. Musa chose that day because he wants everybody to be there and he wants everyone to see the signs of Allah. And Fir'aun accepted. And now Fir'aun is looking for every magician. The magicians all came. It's reported that there were 15,000 magicians. And one narration says 70 magicians. So let's take the smaller of the lot. 70 magicians. They were the top in magic. He brought the best magicians that Egypt could offer. And they looked at Firaun and said, Well, we want to ask you something before we start here. If we win, what's going to happen? Are we going to get some, some money? Firaun told them, Yes, indeed, I'm going to not only give you money, but I will make you my chiefs from amongst my close people. They said, by the glory of Fir'aun, we are the ones that will win, we are the ones that will succeed, we are the ones that will destroy Musa. These 70 magicians were standing in front of Musa. Musa, his point is not to win. His point is to give Dawa. He is giving them another chance. He is saying, this is a lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you continue with that, you will end up failing. These words were discussed by the magicians. They were discussing, is this man really a prophet or he is a magician? In the end, they settled the argument and said, he is a magician. And this is our plan and this is what we gonna do. So imagine with me, this is a festival. All of the people of Egypt are there, surrounding this battlefield. And one side of the battlefield, 70 magicians, that is the minimum number. Imagine it's 15,000, lined up with all their equipment. And on the other side, Musa standing alone and his brother behind him. And all of the people of Egypt are surrounding them and watching. And then they ask Musa, Oh Musa, do you want us to throw our sticks and ropes? Or do you want to throw before? So Musa said, you throw. You begin. And then the magicians will throw their sticks, their ropes and whatever they had. And their sticks and ropes will turn to snakes just floating around everywhere. Everyone got scared, including Musa alayhi salam. He got scared when he saw that scene. Allah says, they had created a huge magic, Allah says. And the eyes of the people were now deceived. Imagine, if we take the narration of 15,000, there are so many sticks and ropes. What must be happening? The people were worried. Hey, look at all this. What will happen? There was a slight concern in the heart of Musa alayhi salam. A little worry. Jibreel will come to Musa and say to him, oh, Musa, Allah is beside you. Allah is with you. Throw your stick. And Allah says a magician will never succeed. Those who want to invoke and call on magic, they will never ever succeed. And he, Musa alayhi salam, will throw his stick. His stick will turn into a massive snake that ate all the snakes that were around. Who saw that? Not Musa alone, not Fir'aun alone. The magicians and all the people living in Egypt saw that with their own eyes. One man against many. One stick against many. That one snake ate all their snakes. Who are the ones who understand what's going on? The magicians. They understood that this is not magic. We are the experts in magic. We know magic from A to Z. We know everything about it. This is not magic. So there are the magicians. 
The other ones who deal with magic. They saw Musa, he's not a man of magic. They saw that stick, and what that stick turned to, that's not magic. So they were the first people to prostrate to the Lord of Musa. And they said, we believe in the Lord of Musa and Harun. Now Fir'aun is watching. Everybody's watching. They're looking at Fir'aun. How are you going to react? Fir'aun says to magicians, you believed in him before I gave you permission. Look at how much control Fir'aun had over people. He even wants them to take permission from him when they want to become Muslim. He then accused them. No, you have worshipped that God because he, this man, is actually your senior who taught you all this magic. You're just making a fool of me here. This is just a plan and a plot that all of you have made in order to get Banu Israel out. I'm going to cut off your hands and your feet. The opposite. So the right hand with the left foot. The left, the left hand with the right foot. And I'm going to crucify all of you. Look at him getting angry, threatening. What was the reaction of these magicians? They said, no problem. Do what you want to us, Fir'aun. We are definitely going to return to Allah either way. If you kill us or if we die naturally. But we have a hope that you don't have. We are hopeful that our Rabb will forgive our sins and he will forgive the fact that you forced us to engage in this magic here. For indeed Allah is the everlasting and he is much better. Look at what Iman does. The same people who came and were asking for money are now saying we are not only willing to give our wealth, we are willing to give our life for the sake of Allah. Because the reward of Allah is better. This is what Iman does. And if our Iman is not carrying us to that level, then that means that our Iman is very weak. That one prostration is equal to a thousand prostration of many of us. That one prostration made those musicians strong and firm. They are willing to sacrifice their life. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we have been prostrating to Allah for years, and we can't even sometimes sacrifice a little sacrifice for Allah. Their hands and arms and feet were chopped and no doubt they were crucified by Fir'aun. They died in the sake of Allah. These magicians who were committing one of the major crimes and sins, magic, Iman transformed them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the tawbah of anyone and then they became shuhada in the end. Now things were getting little bit difficult on Fir'aun because this embarrassing event happened in front of all of the people of Egypt. So the evil advisors of Fir'aun came to him and said, we need to do something. You can't let things get out of control. Who were the advisors of Fir'aun, the two major advisors? Haman and Qarun. Haman is the, is the guy behind the ideas and Qarun is the man behind the money. See, this is what happens. They have people advising them. They, don't, they themselves don't have all the bright ideas. So they pushed Fir'aun. So Fir'aun said, We will kill their sons and we will let their women live. And we have irresistible power over them. Didn't Fir'aun issue this order before? When did he issue it? When Musa was born. Bani Israel, when this issue was decreed, Bani Israel, what did they say? They said, We have received harm when you were born. And we are receiving harm from you now. All this trouble is because of you. They were killing us in the beginning because of you, because of your birth. That is why our children were killed. And now our children are killed again. Why? Because of you another time. And this is the nature of the people who are not willing to sacrifice anything for the sake of Allah. People who are already humiliated. They want victory. They want success. But they are not willing to pay the price for it. But Musa told them, it may be that your Lord will destroy your enemy and make you successors on the earth, so that he may see you how you act. Allah will give you victory over your enemy and Allah will give you hilafah, but you have to go through sacrifice. He said, seek help from Allah and be patient. Fir'aun warned him that we are going to kill you. Fir'aun says, let me kill this man. He can call out to his God to save him. Let's see who can save him. Remember, there were people who had accepted the message. Small number. From amongst them, there was a man. This man is from the family of Fir'aun, a believer that concealed his faith. Subhanallah. Allah makes mention of him in the Quran. There is a whole surah named after this man. Al-Mu'min, the one believer from the family of Fir'aun, anonymous. They knew who he was, but his 
Iman, they did not know he believed, but he was just now arguing with them or trying to reason with them. Do you want to kill a man who is claiming that his God is Allah, the maker, the creator? You want to kill him? How can you want to kill him when he has brought the signs from his Rabb to you to clearly see? If he is a liar, his lies will overtake him. But if he is telling the truth, then you people have had it. So if he's a liar, it's not going to harm you. It's going to harm him. And if he is telling the truth, then you people have had it. Punishment is coming in your direction. What he's promising you is heading in your direction. So the best thing, don't kill him, leave him. So they decided not to kill Musa alayhi salam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this man says, I fear a punishment might overtake you just like it overtook the people before you of Ad and Thamud and the others and the people of Noah and what have you. A punishment might overtake you in the same way. And he continued to tell them, I am calling you towards savior. You calling me towards the fire, which means they were debating with him. Look at the courage of this man. Fir'aun is killing anyone that believes in Musa. But this man did not, con he did not keep his mouth shut. He concealed his faith, but he did not conceal his tongue. This is a lesson for us to learn. Whenever we have a case in our own little lives where you have justice on one side and injustice on the other, even if there is nobody on the side of justice, we should find ourselves supporting it. Allah saved that man. The day the punishment came, this man who was telling everyone to be careful was one of those who were saved. What do we learn from this? When people are prohibiting others from engaging in evil, the day the punishment comes, they will be saved first and the rest will be punished. But when everybody is silent and they're allowing it to pass, even though they may not be engaging in it, in that case, when the punishment comes, Allah says it will come wholesale to everyone. And Musa alayhi salam will go back to Fir'aun and say, Oh Fir'aun, free Bani Israel and send Bani Israel with me. Enough is enough. You've tortured Bani Israel. You've treated them like slaves. Now I want you to free them and send them with me. Fir'aun say, no, I'm not going to send them. And Musa will say, my Lord orders me to do so. And Fir'aun denies the Lord of Musa alayhi salam. And Musa will insist. And Fir'aun is too scared to go near Musa alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start to torture Fir'aun and his people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and indeed, we punish the people of Pharaoh with years of drought and shortness of fruits that they may remember. The first punishment is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Fir'aun and the Egyptians go through a severe drought that they never ever experienced before. The second one was the loss of produce. So they had lack of crop, no produce. And a man telling you, I am the God and he's lived a proper life of luxury all along and suddenly he's got nothing to eat they cannot live that life anymore so what happened when goodness came in their direction they said this is from us and whenever something bad came to them like this they always said that this is musa and his people because of their bad omens we are suffering we need to get rid of them they went to musa after some time and they said oh musa oh magician go and call your god to remove this calamity we are in, if he removes it, we are guided. Don't worry, we will accept your message. Musa made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them with rain and fruits again. They broke their promise to Musa. So Allah says, we sent them yet another sign. Third sign. The next sign was the flood. Flood will come to them that will destroy all the houses of the Egyptians and the house of Bani Israel untouched. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Nile river flood. So it would flood on the banks. It would cover their fields and then the water would stick there. So they cannot plant in the fields. It was an amazing flood. It's a miracle. So they went to Musa and they said, Please ask Allah, your Lord, to release us from this punishment. And if you do so, we gonna believe in you and we gonna send Bani Israel. Musa made dua to Allah, so the water receded. Now they went to their fields and they started planting again. They said, we don't know who you are. We not going to believe and we not going to send Bani Israel. So Allah says, okay, we sent them. After the third sign, a fourth one. What was the fourth one? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them locusts. Allah sent on them clouds of locusts that will block the sun. And these clouds would march over their fields. 
and eat anything they find in front of them. They would eat all of the plants and the trees in the field. They would leave them dead. And then they would march on the houses and eat the wood. Miracles from Allah. Destruction that went over Egypt. Clouds of locusts marching over the land of Egypt. Destroying everything. They went to Musa begging. O oh Musa, ask Allah to release us from this punishment. We gonna believe and send Ben Israel with you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released that punishment from them. They broke their promise again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them another sign. Allah sent on them lies and ticks. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these insects on them in millions. Millions. Their clothes would be filled inside with lies and ticks. Biting them. Sucking their blood. Everywhere you go. They sleep, they are bitten. They walk, they are bitten. They go to their farms, they are bitten. They come here, they are bitten. They can't sleep because of it. The Egyptians are facing this punishment and the people of Bani Israel are no more. And who can release them from that? Allah. They went to Musa. Musa made dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away the punishment. They broke their promise again. Subhanallah. Look at the insistence on kufur. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent on them another sign. Frogs. Wherever they go, there's frogs. Frogs in the pillars, in the mattresses, in the toilets, in the food, in the farms, in the houses, in the gatherings. Frogs are just popping out of everywhere. One of them put his clothes on, frogs would jump on his body. They would open their mouths and their mouths would be filled with frogs. They went to Musa, O oh Musa, release us from this punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released from this. They broke their promise another time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then sent on them, at them, blood. The people of Fir'aun, the people of Egypt would go and take water from the Nile river. By the time they reach home, it is thick blood. They would take water out of their wells. By the time they want to drink it, it is thick blood. By Israel will take the water from the Nile river and they would drink it, it is water. They would be taking water from the wells, it would be water. With the Egyptians and the people of Fir'aun, it will turn into blood. They went to Musa and said, release us from this punishment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala released them from this punishment. But that was the last sign that they would receive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every time we sent them a sign, it was bigger than the previous one. Which means the first sign was a little bit less. The second one came, it was worse. The third one came even worse. Allah says, then we sent them so many signs. They were too arrogant to accept the truth. They were criminals. Allah says about these people, if they see every sin, they will not believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them enough chances and they committed their kufr with insistence and they have seen all of their signs and they were still on the kufr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fir'aun after that said, and Pharaoh proclaimed among the people, saying, O oh my people, is not mine the dominion of Egypt and these rivers flowing underneath me, see you not? Am I not better than this man who is degraded, who is weak? He is saying this about Musa. Musa is not even able to speak. He is making fun of the speech of Musa. Because we said Musa had a problem with speaking. And then look at the standards of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is saying that he is degraded. He is low class. Why? Pharaoh says, Why then are not golden bracelets bestowed on him or angels sent along with him? How come Musa does not have any gold bracelets? Look at the standard of thinking of Pharaoh. How come he doesn't have any gold? Why is he poor? Why doesn't he have angels with him? Why does he need to seek assistance from the weak slaves of Bani Israel? That is the way they think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Thus he, Pharaoh, befooled and mislead his people, and they obeyed him. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa alayhi salam and his people, they were suffering a lot. At the hands of Pharaoh, he was oppressing them in so many different ways. Musa alayhi salam tells his people, O oh my people, if you firmly believe in Allah, now is the time to lay your full trust in Allah. So what did they say? They responded at that point. They had seen what had happened all along. They said, we have now laid our trust in Allah. Allah is the best disposer of affairs. And then they said, and save us by your mercy from the disbelieving fox. Musa received wahi from Allah. Allah is telling him, mark the houses of Bani Israel. Musa and Bani Israel, they knew the houses each other whether it is with a certain mark or a flag. This is one order. The another, the second order that Musa received in this revelation is Make sure that you fulfill your prayers even in your homes, which means do not leave your home as though it is a grave. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Bani Israel, you need to prepare yourselves and you need to make a lot of sujood and you need to turn your houses into the places of ibadah and you need to establish salah and then in the end and give the believers the glad tidings. The victory is soon. Musa alayhi salam to this point had not made the dua against Fir'aun yet. All his du'as were, Ya Allah, these people are now suffering, take it away from them. Allah took it away. So it was actually a mercy. Musa made his du'a against Fir'aun, but he did not do it until he exhausted all means possible. Musa tried everything possible, soft words, presenting him with nine ayahs, one after the other. Nothing worked with Fir'aun. In the end, when Musa used all possible means, then Musa made a du'a against Fir'aun. And what did he say? Oh Allah, you have given Fir'aun and all his people lots of beauty and lots of goodness in this world. Ya Allah, you have given them wealth so much in this world. And then what did he say? This wealth which is in the hands of Fir'aun is not used for your sake, but it is used against your religion. This wealth which they have, which they are using against Islam and against your religion, O oh Allah, destroy it and harden their hearts so that they will not believe until they see the painful torment. Allah says, the dua of both of you is accepted. Now you just be steadfast, remain steadfast. Never ever follow the path of those who don't know the two of you. Who are the two? Musa and Harun. May peace be upon them. So the dua was made by Musa alayhi salam. It is reported Harun alayhi salam was standing next to him saying, Amin, Amin. And we inspired to Musa saying, take away my slaves by night. Verily you will be pursued. Now you understand why the houses were marked. Because the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Bani Israel to leave will be sudden. So Musa needs to know where the homes of Bani Israel are located. So that they will immediately leave when the order of Allah comes. So when the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealed for Musa to leave with the children of Israel, they have to have a plan which is already prepared. So they could leave suddenly without for our knowing. And during the night, Musa alayhi salam will prepare Bani Israel. He sends the word around to Bani Israel. Let every member from Bani Israel to be prepared that during the night when everyone else is asleep, they get together and they leave the city of Egypt going towards Jerusalem. So they all went. How many were they? There were 600,000, more than half a million. Pharaoh alone, he had an army that exceeds 1.5 million soldiers. And this is a great army that in history you've never heard of such number in one army. And as they're gone, Firaun gets the news. So Firaun says, what? They are going there. We are going to follow them. But Allah had already told Musa alayhi salam, you are going to be followed. Firaun was gathering all of his army. Notice Firaun was gathering not half of it, not 75%. He was gathering all of his army. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Firaun to gather all of his army so that they can all be expelled. So Fir'aun is coming, but he was too lazy to go by night. You see, he had all different mode of transport, much quicker and faster than these people who were busy walking. So Musa alayhi salam is walking with them. Fir'aun and them, they left early morning. They didn't want to travel by night. Musa and Bani Israel were traveling east. Fir'aun and his army were following them. Musa and Bani Israel, they reached to the Red Sea. Where Musa alayhi salam is standing, trying to figure out which way possible for them to go from one side of the sea to the other side so they could go to the land that Allah had promised. Musa alayhi salam is there trying to figure this out. What does the news come to them? That Fir'aun and his army are coming. And Fir'aun and his army, an army that exceeds 1.5 million soldiers, my brothers and sisters. And from a distance, the people of Musa who were right at the end, they saw these people of Fir'aun coming in. And now Bani Israel are looking to their back and they see that Fir'aun is coming closer and closer. And they look to the front and they find the Red Sea. What was the reaction of Bani Israel? And when the two hosts saw each other, the people of Musa said, we are surely going to be overtaken. The sea is in front of us, Fir'aun is behind us, we are dead. And it is said that the mountains on the side, there is no way we can go. It is said that Musa was towards the end. So Musa and Harun and Yusha bin Nun, they made it all the way to the front to the sea and they stood there. When Israel are looking at Fir'aun, he is coming closer and closer and they are putting pressure on Musa. What are you doing? They are going to overtake us. They are going to kill us. 
What's going on here? What's happening? Musa, you were supposed to save us, not put us in the worst torture. You were supposed to take away the problems from us, not increase the problems over us. You were supposed to help us, not make things worse over us. Look now, what are we going to do? The sea is in front of us. Fir'aun is towards our back. Mountains on the side. Musa does not believe all of this. He said no. Absolutely no. Allah will guide me. Don't worry, Allah Azza wa Jal will guide me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save us. He does not believe what he sees. He does not believe what he hears. But he believes the unseen, which he can neither hear nor see. I believe in Allah that He will guide me. Allah has promised me. I believe in the promise of Allah. Fir'aun is closing in and he is getting closer and closer and they can start seeing the individual soldiers of the army of Fir'aun right towards their back. And they are putting pressure. Bani Israel are putting pressure on Musa and they are telling him, what are you doing? And imagine the situation of the leadership in that situation. He is telling them, Allah has promised me that He will guide us. And they see Fir'aun is catching upon them. And he is still telling them, No, I believe in Allah. I don't believe what you are saying. I don't believe that Fir'aun will be able to overtake us. Test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that difficult moment, that is when the victory of Allah descends. When things become very difficult and people start failing. Like what happened with Bani Israel. They failed in this test. It is a test for the believers. And the ones who were able to pass it are Musa and Harun and Yusha bin Nun and some of the other elders and the leaders of Bani Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And then we revealed to Musa, Hit the sea with your stick. Musa hit the sea with the stick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The sea is split up and every portion was like a huge mountain. Musa in front of his eyes is seeing this water spin up and break into two pieces and then stand up like two huge mountains in front of his eyes and in front of the eyes of Bani Israel. They are seeing another ayah in front of their eyes. The bottom, the basin of the sea is wet. How can they walk on it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it dry. Musa stood and he made all of Bani Israel pass through and then he was the last one to go. When they reached to the other side, Musa he hit the sea with his stick because he wanted to close it. What divided the sea? The stick. But is it really the stick that divided the sea? It is not the stick that divided the sea. It is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that divided the sea. So why did Musa have to use the stick? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give you victory until you do your part. The victory of Allah will not come until you do your part. Now Firaun and his people are wondering what's happening here. But as they got closer, these people were already far inside. They were already starting to come out on the other side. Fir'aun, he looks, he sees, he says, you see, this road, it happened for me. Wallahi, it did happen for him. But in order to destroy him, not in order to assist him. Why did Musa want to close the sea? To prevent Fir'aun from coming. He is planning. Allah told Musa, leave the sea alone. Why? Because they are going to drown. After all of the Bani Israel passed and Musa passed, Fir'aun and his army, they went through the basin. When all of it was on the basin of the sea, all of them from Fir'aun to the last soldier, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the water to return to its normal state of water again. And it closed on Fir'aun and his army. The body of Fir'aun was spinning up and down in the water in front of the eyes of Bani Israel so that they can see the fate of the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the tyrant Fir'aun. When Fir'aun saw the punishment of Allah, Fir'aun raised up his finger and he said, I believe that there is no God but the God of children of Israel and I am a Muslim. He believed in Islam but he believed when it was too late. When he was seeing the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending on him, he said, I believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Now you want to believe when you have committed corruption before. When you have disbelieved before and you have committed corruption, we will save your body and preserve it today so that you could be a sign for the people after you. Most of the people are unaware of our signs. Jibreel salam came to Muhammad wasalam and said, If you have just seen me when Fir'aun was drowning and I was stuffing his mouth with mud so that the mercy of Allah would not come on him. Not only Musa hated Fir'aun, even Jibreel. Jibreel said that he was stuffing dirt in the mouth of Fir'aun 
when he saw that he wants to say la ilaha illallah the body of firaun is being carried from one place to another around the world not to show you the glory of the firaunic civilization not for you to put him in a museum and you go and visit to see the magnificent heritage of firaun not to go and take pictures of the body of firaun to show how great that civilization was firaun who was the worst whom allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept his body so that it would be a sign for us the people are treating his body and his existence the exact opposite way of how it was intended and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closes this ayah with but most of the people are unaware of our signs it is important as we continue we make mention of one very very important female who was praised by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although she lived in the midst of tyranny who was this the wife of firaun وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك